Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of, one of my newest members, Theory Vivil. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. Forgive me if I did. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members get perks such as being able to view the thumbnail hours before the video premieres and they're also giving shout outs in my videos. To become a member, you can just click the join button and become a member. All right, great. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be looking at a functional equation, which is fairly interesting. We're going to be solving for f of x. The equation is f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y plus 2xy. Now, at this point, some of you are probably thinking, hey, I know a solution to this problem, and that happens to be f of x equals x squared, right? Okay f of x equals x squared works. Why? Because if you square x plus y, you get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. And with the assumption that f of x equals x squared, this happens to be f of x, this happens to be f of y, and this happens to be f of x plus y. And then our equation is satisfied. But of course, this is kind of like guess and check. We've got one solution but can we find other solutions or are there other solutions? Well, I'll be presenting two methods here. So here's the first method. Okay, so our first method involves using f of x equals x squared as a base. So we know that f of x equals x squared is a solution, but can we find another function such that f of x can be written as x squared plus h of x? By the way, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the exact same f of x here because we can use f of x for general purposes and here we're basically talking about a general solution, right? And if h of x is equal to zero, obviously we get the trivial solution which is f of x equals x squared. But my question is, can we find uh, a non-zero function h of x such that when I add it to x squared, it becomes a solution as well? So let's see how that works out. Okay, now, since I assume that my f of x is going to be in this form, then I'm going to isolate h of x here, and I can write h of x as f of x minus x squared. My next step would be to evaluate h of x plus y. Why? Because my functional equation have, has that kind of structure, so it would make sense if I could evaluate h of x plus y, and it's also going to give me f of x plus y on the right hand side, which is good. Okay, great. So now re let's, let's replace everything. I mean, let's replace x with x plus y on both sides. That gives us f of x plus y minus x plus y quantity squared. Great. Now, let's go ahead and use the definition of f of x plus y as given in the equation. As you know, f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y plus 2xy. So I can replace f of x plus y with that. And that gives me something nice when I expand this. Of course, I have to negate everything. Now here, 2xy cancels out. And we end up with something like this. So let's go ahead and rearrange the terms. And write h of x plus y as f of x minus x squared plus f of y minus y squared. And what does this tell you, given that we know h of x can be written as f of x minus x squared. Yes, that is correct. This is h of x and this is h of y. So we can write h of x plus y as h of x plus h of y. Well, this is a different functional equation, but this is a very famous functional equation and it's one of the Cauchy's functional equations, right? So Cauchy is a great mathematician, and he worked on functional equations and a bunch of other things, obviously. But this is one of the equations that he particularly worked on. And this equation has a simple solution. We're not going to get into the details. Later on, maybe we can look at it in another video. But h of x, in this case, if you're, you're talking about basically a sum being preserved. So in other words, an additive function. And linear functions are additive in that sense. So we can replace h of x with ax, where a is a constant. And when you substitute, you're going to see that this actually works because a times x plus y can be written as a 
x plus ay by using the distributive property. Great. So since h of x can be written as ax, and at the beginning, if you remember, I assumed that my other solution could be written like this, x squared plus h of x. So we got another solution here, which is x squared plus ax. And when you plug it into the original equation, in addition to x squared, you're going to notice that this equation also satisfies the original functional equation that we have. All right, now let's talk about the second method and see how that works. Second method. Now, my second method is obviously slightly different from this. Well, maybe not slightly, but completely differently. But let me rewrite my original equation one more time. I have f of x, y equals f of x plus f of y plus 2xy. Okay, the first method involved finding a solution by guessing and checking, and we did, and we used it as a reference point. Second method will be more direct. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the definition for the derivative of f with respect to x. What is df over dx? By the way, this is a differentiable function. Did I forget to say that? Forgive me if I did. Limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. You know, this is the definition of the derivative. And let's go ahead and do some substitution, which is kind of fun, right? Well, I can write this as limit as h approaches 0. Now, from the functional equation that we have, f of x plus h can be replaced with f of x plus f of h plus 2xh minus f of x itself, which is f of x, all over h. Great. Now, I'd like to simplify this as much as possible. Notice that f of x cancels out. Great. So let's go ahead and write it in the simplest form. D of df over dx can be written as limit as h approaches 0. Now, I can separate these two terms here. I have 2xh over h plus f of h over h. As you know, the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. So I can basically separate these two into two pieces. So write it as limit as h approaches 0 of, now notice that here the h cancels out. So I get the limit of 2x plus the limit of f of h over h. Since h, uh, f of h or f of x is differentiable, this limit exists and we can basically uh, work uh, off of this. Now, what is the limit of 2x as h approaches 0? Well, 2x doesn't depend on h. So it's, it's a considered a constant from an h perspective. So its limit is just going to be itself, which is 2x. And this here, this expression right here, is actually uh, a constant, right? So I can basically write it as a constant because as h approaches 0, since this limit exists, the result is just going to be a constant. So let's go ahead and write it as a, where a is a constant. Hopefully you see where I'm, what I'm getting at from here. But D, uh, df over dx, which is the derivative, can be written like this. Now, this, uh, this is a differential equation, which is fairly easy to solve uh, because we only have one variable, x. And what we can do is we can just multiply both sides by dx and write this as df equals the quantity 2x plus a multiplied by dx. And then we can go ahead and differentiate both Size. I mean, did I say differentiate? Integrate. That's what I meant. Okay, great. So we can go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to x. Since f is a function of x, we can differentiate it with respect to x. And when we do, we're going to get f from the left-hand side. Of course, there is a constant c, but I'm going to write it all the way at the end. Okay? So now when you integrate, did I say differentiate? I don't know. Okay, I'm getting confused here. But anyways, when you integrate the, the f, you get f. Constant, I'm going to save it for the end. The, when you integrate 2x, you get x squared, as you know from the power rule, and the integral of a is just a times x from, again, antiderivatives. But this is an integral, so I have to use another constant. Let's just use k, okay, since we have to add it at the end. Now, so f can be written like this, or I can just write it as f of x if you want. It kind of looks a little better. This is a function of x. Now, I got the answer, right? But what happens to k? Well, we still have to use our equation, uh, original equation, and make sure that it satisfies the original one. Let's go ahead and uh, use our original equation, which was f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y plus 
to x, y. Now I gotta plug this into my original equation and see uh, if I can find anything about a or k. So f of x plus y is gonna be x plus y squared plus a times x plus y plus k. And then the same thing goes for f of y, uh, you know. Okay, let's see. This is the left hand side, never mind. Uh, I'm confusing myself again. This is the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, I have f of x, which is x squared plus ax plus k, and then I have f of y, which is y squared plus ay plus k, and then 2xy is just 2xy. Now, we're going to expand both sides and see what happens. Uh, if you expand the left-hand side, you get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy, and then you get ax plus ay, and then plus k. On the right-hand side, you're going to be getting x squared plus y squared plus ax plus ay plus 2xy plus 2k. Okay, great. Now let's see what happens. We can pretty much cancel out a lot of different things here. Let's go ahead and do that. x squared cancels out, y squared cancels out, 2xy cancels out, ax cancels out, ay cancels out. Pretty much everything cancels out. And we end up with something like k equals 2a. So let me make a joke here. You cancel out the k and you get 1 equals 2. Awesome. We made a proof. Okay. Obviously, that's not going to work because you're not allowed to divide both sides by k because k is equal to 0. All right? If you solve this equation by subtracting k from both sides, you're going to get k equals 0. But remember, our equation was in this form. f of x was x squared plus ax plus k. So f of x equals x squared plus ax plus k, but k is equal to zero, so that's going to be my solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.